Hope Church, what is going on? Welcome to Hope Church Online. My name is Alex. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Hope Church. I'm going to be your host for the morning, and we are so excited to have you for church here today. I want to let you know that we are starting a brand new teaching series today called Summer at Hope. It is all about relationships, and we are so, so, so excited about it. So if you are in a relationship currently, if you used to be in a relationship or you want to be in a relationship, then this series is just for you as we talk about what every relationship needs, what every relationship needs. So we're so excited about it. I truly believe personally that this is gonna be a huge blessing for my family and for yours. I also wanna let you know that speaking of relationships, we are starting a brand new semester of grow groups for the summertime. We are so excited about what God is doing in our grow groups today. Today is the last day for you to sign up for a grow group. I'm so excited about my own grow group. So I wanna encourage you, why don't you jump onto the website or find a way to learn more about what God is doing through grow groups at Hope Church and find a grow group that fits your schedule. I know that God's gonna bless that time for you. Uh, I also want to let you know that if this is your very first time here at Hope Church, we are so honored and uh, just so excited for you to be joining us here today. We Again, we believe that we have an awesome service here just for you, and we want to be there for you in any way that we can. We would love to have a conversation with you. We would love to learn your name, and the best way that we can do that is for you to fill out a connection card. So if you're watching on our online platform, you can, get, you can click the connection card link that's right there on your screen. Or if you're listening to this sometime during the week, you can always text NEW TO HOPE to 64600 and we'll get in contact with you. You can fill out that connection card and we'll be able to contact you in that way. We're so excited again that you've chosen to spend a bit of your day here with us. So in our service now, we're going to transition into a time of worship. So I would just encourage you now in this moment to posture yourself in a posture of worship. So whether that's standing or remain seating, whatever that means for you, let's go ahead and trans. Uh, transition into a time of worship. What is going on, Hope Church? As Pastor Alex said, we're getting ready to go into a time of worship and we're all very familiar with that, but today it's gonna look just a little bit different. Aaron and I are so excited to be here um, to worship with you and engage with you wherever you are. And you're probably sitting at home right now and it may be a little bit weird that we're talking to you and engaging with you uh, while you're sitting on your couch, but we'll get past that real quick. It's gonna be great. We're just so grateful for technology that we can come together as a church. So let's worship today. Sing, you make a way. You make a way when I cannot see you are my strength. Though my heart is weak, you won't let go. You take my place. You take my place. On this battlefield, you go before. You're my sword and shield. I'm not.
have you always had my victory It's in your hands, it's in your hands The God of heaven, He's my defense See one more time, you fight You fight
Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you are good. We thank you that we can rely on you, that we can trust you, God. And, and that's something that we're very grateful for today. God, we probably had expectations about how this year was gonna go. And so far, at least for me personally, none of that has panned out the way that I thought it would, God. But I know, and we all know, that one thing is still constant, is that you are in control, God. That you are on the throne, that we shouldn't worry, we shouldn't fret because the one who created the universe is holding our lives in his hand. And there's nothing, nothing more powerful than you, God. And we can, we can believe and know that you are good. God, you've been good. You're always gonna be good. God, you are good. We love you. We thank you. And we praise your name this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So about this time on a normal day, we would ask you to stand up and greet your neighbor. Um, but right now in your virtual lobby, why don't you just take a second, say hey, say where you're watching from and just say hello and chat there for just a second. And Tad, Pastor Tad's gonna come out and give us the message. Well, what is up, Hope Church family? We are so excited to have you with us today here at Hope Church Online. As Alex said, we're kicking off a brand new teaching series today called Summer at Hope. We're going to be talking about what every relationship needs for the next eight weeks. And I think it's going to be life-changing for so many of us. You say, Tad, why do you think it's so important? Because here's what I know. When things aren't good at home with your friendships, relationships, and your dating relationships, with your kids, with your spouse, things just aren't good no matter what's happening in your life. And I think in this season of us being stuck at home, it has probably magnified the issues and problems that many of us have within our homes. And so in this series, we're fixing to talk about everything. We're going to leave no stone unturned. We're going to talk about dating and relationships and singleness, parenting, marriage. We're going to talk about finances and priorities. We're going to spend a week talking about what every man wants. It's going to take about two minutes for that conversation. And then we're going to spend a week talking about what every woman wants, and that's going to grow into an 18-part message. And by the time we get to the end of it, we're going to be equally as confused as what every woman wants. But listen, to them, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I want to encourage you to journey along with us here this summer at Hope Church. So I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to commit to being with us for the next eight weeks. The beauty about Hope Church Online is that we meet you right where you are, no matter where you are. And so if you can join us Sundays at 9, 11, and 6, that would be awesome. If you can't join us on Sundays during the summer, you can join us Monday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. If you can't join us on Sundays or Mondays, you can literally join us any day of the week, no matter where you are. And so I want to encourage you, whether it's through our Hope Church app or, or online through our Hope Church website, whether it's through YouTube, whether it's through Facebook, whether it's through a podcast, whether it's through just streaming services. Literally, we bring our messages to you wherever you are, and I want to encourage you to dive in this series because I just believe if you'll walk this journey with us, that God could do so much in your current relationships, 
in your future relationships. Maybe you're watching this and you're saying, Tad, I'm single. I'm not in a relationship right now. I have no kids. I would say, you are in the catbird seat. You're in a great place right now to get some weapons for your arsenal, to go on the offense, so that you can be better prepared before the relationship comes, before the marriage comes, before the kids come, right? And so you're in a great place. And so here's something else I want to tell you. In this series, we're going to engage a little differently than we've ever engaged before. So throughout our time together, what I'm going to encourage you to do is if you're at home watching this with a spouse or your kids or some friends or maybe you're grabbing with your grow group, I'm going to encourage you just through a question to take a few moments and walk through that question together. If you're watching this by yourself, I want to encourage you right now to log into our chat. Our chat is one of the best ways for you to engage in the message for you to be part of what's happening, for the message to come alive to you. We have a host team and a whole slew of people who would love to meet you there who want to engage with you today. So I want to encourage you right now, I'm talking to you, to go ahead and get logged in and join us on our online platform because I just believe that God's got something great in store for your life, again, when it comes to this issue of relationships. So today I want to begin really a two-part conversation. And so today is part one of a two-part kind of introduction to this series of just this whole idea about relationships and what every relationship needs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let you know, is up front, is I'm going to spend some time today just talking about what we're longing for and looking for in relationships and what we're lacking. And I'm really going to get the scripture kind of at the very end of the message. And really it's going to catapult us to where we're going next week. And so again, I want to encourage you to get back next week to what God has. So today as we kind of launch into a conversation about relationships and the home, I want you to think about what instantly comes to mind when you think about relationships. Now, if I were to talk about relationships, our family, our marriage, our parenting, can you just imagine if we were to open that up today, how many different opinions or ideas or pictures does each person have in their head when you talk about what a family looks like, what a marriage looks like, what a home looks like? I don't know what the ideal family image is for you, but in our culture, we've seen a lot of the ideal families in our culture. I want to just run through a couple of those with you this, 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 in our time together today. Maybe for some of you, we think about the ideal families. You think of somebody like this right here. How about the, the Obama family? Right, great family. Think about a family like this. You think, man, there's a picture of just a solid family. How many of you, it's this family right here? Maybe it's, it's the Trump family, right? And we see this kind of family of power, right? And all of them are kind of in these high working class positions. We think, oh, man, that, that's a great family, right? How many of us know the the royal family of hip-hop? How many of us know the Kardashian West family? And some of us think that's a great image of of a family, right? How many of us, we think about families, we think about the royal family right here, the royal family. You know what I know about even the royal family? Is all families have royal problems, don't they, right? And so if you've ever walked through any problems in a marriage with your kids, in dating, relationships with friends, even though we have these images in our mind, let's be honest, All relationships have problems. That's why we read the tabloids, right? That's why we see the fights against against the daughter-in-laws, right, in the royal family, right? We're drawn to those things. Why? Because every family unit, every home, every relationship has one common denominator. It's got people involved. And if if you've ever wondered if people are perfect, get into a family or get into a marriage and you figure out just how quick, how how imperfect somebody else is. Right? We tend to think so often in relationships that I'm perfect and I have it all figured out and it's the other, perf- other person's problem. But the reality today is that none of us are perfect. None of us have it figured out. Relationships are built on this, this human connection and humans aren't perfect. If you're ever feeling discouraged, if you're ever feeling beat down over maybe failed relationships in the past or maybe a relationship that you feel like is failing now, I would encourage you to pick up God's word. Because if you've ever felt like, I just can't win in relationships, just go to literally the first book of God's story and God's word, the book of Genesis. God creates the first human beings, man and woman, Adam and Eve, and it takes them like five minutes to really screw it up, doesn't it? And not only do they screw themselves up, right, but they pass it on to their kids, Cain and Abel, and then they screw it up. And we go on from Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, we go over to this man named Noah, and Noah has a really weird screw-up moment with his kids. You can go read about that. And we skip over from Noah to a guy named Abraham, and God has promised Abraham this offspring, but but the problem with Abraham is that his wife Sarah is barren. And so Abraham, the father of faith, lacks enough faith to trust God. So what does he do? He shortcuts God, he goes around, and he ends up having a child with one of his servants, right? These are just the first three families 
that we read about in God's story. And so if you've ever failed at relationships, if you've ever found yourself being discouraged when it comes to just where you are right now, I want you to find some encouragement as we walk through this together. Maybe for you today, when I talk about ideal relationships, maybe it's not one of these pictures that you saw today. Maybe we'll think about ideal relationships for you. Maybe you're thinking, oh, the ideal relationship for me is this tall, dark, and handsome athlete who makes tons of money, who would give me his credit card that I could have endless shopping sprees. That would be the ideal relationship. Maybe for you, you're thinking, man, if I could just have that supermodel wife who would pose on the hood of my Tesla so I can post some pictures to my Instagram story, right? I mean, maybe that's what you're thinking. I'm looking for some Brad Pitt or Denzel Washington to come and just sweep me off my feet. I want to start today with just a question today, and this is first question today is this. What is your ideal relationship? When you think about relationships, what is the ideal relationship that you have? And here's what I want to do. I want to encourage you right now. No matter where you're at in the world right now, if you've got some people in your home, you got your spouse with you, kids with you, some friends with you, I want to encourage you right now to take 90 seconds and just talk about what you envision to be the ideal relationship. If you're on, online with us on our online platform, I want to encourage you right now to jump into the chat and just discuss for 90 seconds what is the ideal relationship for you. Let's be honest, our view of relationships is so skewed. I mean, our, our view of relationships and our thought process of relationships are so often what we've watched, what we've read about, what we see, even when it comes to our friendships. How many of us have been longing for friendships like these people right here? How many of us have longed to have friendships like Chandler and Joey and Rachel and Monica and Phoebe and all those, right? Like we've been looking for those. And some of us would say, I got something very similar to this. But let's be honest, even our friendships, for many of us, this isn't reality. So what happens when our idea, our idea of the perfect marriage, of the perfect relationship with a guy or girl, with, with perfect friendships, with our children, what happens when that idea fades away? What happens when, when we're chasing after? It's kind of fool's gold. Because isn't it true that movies and songs and culture and social media kind of set us up for this epic failure because we kind of have this idea and this image that we're longing for. But what happens when that idea or that, that image implodes around us? What happens to us? So many of us, it leads us wondering, could we ever really find happiness in relationships? Could we ever really find a solid marriage? Could we ever really find the person that would complete us in our life? And so it leads us so often wondering, what's next for me? Where do I go? For some of you, it's left you at a place today where you feel like throwing in the towel and giving up. Some of you are so discouraged, you think, why would I even try again? Why would I even move forward? And the enemy creeps into moments like this, and he convinces you that you'll never have the relationships that God wants you to have, that, that you'll never be fully satisfied. You'll never find the right person that can complete you. You'll never find the suitable helper that we'll learn about that God has gifted to you. And so many people today are discouraged and defeated. I think at the root of it, though, the biggest problem we have in our culture is that so many relationships aren't built on the right foundation. 
What's lacking so often is that we're chasing after this idea or image of a relationship, but if we can be honest, it's not built on a sustaining foundation. And so since the foundation isn't right, let's be honest, the relationship is destined to fail. And so many of us, that's where we are. We've seen it fail time and time again. And so since the foundation's not there, we get discouraged and we give up or we try to just shortcut or just settle for whatever we can find. And that's where many of us are today. Again, we're just discouraged, defeated, struggling. How many of others of us were kind of on the flip side? Maybe you were like me and you saw some good models growing up. Maybe models that didn't fail you. Maybe you had good parents and godly parents or you had a godly example of a marriage from your grandparents or some authority figure in your life. And it was so great that now you feel the pressure that you're failing to be like them. And so maybe you had that parent or, again, that that guardian who took care of you and spent time with you. And now as a parent, you feel like I'm constantly failing, right? We have this pressure all around us. We're inundated with it, right? Again, we watch movies like The Notebook, right? And we're longing for this love that seems like, will I ever find that? We listen to the Taylor Swift songs about all her amazing breakups and then all of these these superhero princes that come and sweep her off her feet and we're wondering, well, when's my prince gonna come? Who's coming to rescue me? So what I think today what we gotta do is we gotta get to narrow our focus to what really is the right goal that we're chasing after. Because again, when we don't have the right foundation, then what leads to many of us is that we begin to identify the wrong goals. And many of us, if we could really narrow in on what our goals are for our home, our marriage, parenting, grandparenting, whatever it might be, our goals are all wrong. So I want to start today, again, with just kind of defining what the word goal means so that you and I can kind of get on the same page. If you're taking notes with us today, I want to encourage you to write this down. The word goal means this. It means the result or achievement towards which effort is directed. The result or achievement toward which effort is directed. In other words, you and I, if we're going to put forth effort, we have to know what the goal is. We have to have the right goal in mind because if you and I don't know what the goal is, then we can just shoot and anything we hit could easily become the target, right? It'd be like you and I, if I were to gather us together today and say, hey, let's play a game of basketball. But we're not really going to shoot the ball in the hoop. For the next 48 minutes, we're just going to dribble around. And after a little bit, you'd say, well, what's the goal? No real goal. We're just going to dribble around for the next 48 minutes. At some point, you'd say, well, if the goal isn't to put the ball in the basket, whoever scores the most points wins, then why am I going to continue to put forth maximum effort, right? Why am I going to continue to give my very best, right, when there isn't a goal in mind? And see, that's the problem in some of our relationships today. We don't have the right goal, so we don't know how to put in the maximum effort. So what I want to do in our time together is I want to begin to build on a foundation of God in our life. And as we begin to build on a foundation of God, we begin to get the right goals. And when you have the right goal and you know what you're going after, then it allows you to be able to put in your maximum effort when it comes to life. So here's what I would ask you right now. If you're in a dating relationship, what is your goal? Have you even talked about it? Have you even discussed it? If you're in a really serious relationship right now, what's the goal? Where are you going? If you're in a married relationship right now, I don't care if you've been married for 50 years. What's the goal? Where are you trying to get to? If you're a parent right now, a single parent, or your parents working together, what's the goal? When it comes to your friendships right now and your relationships, what is your goal? Here's what I want to do right now. I want to encourage you right now, no matter where you are, no matter where you're watching this from, I want to encourage you, maybe in your home for the first time, in a dating relationship, in a married relationship, in a parenting relationship, Maybe to begin to write down what your goals are for your relationship, where you're trying to get to. Where do you ultimately think God wants to take you in this season of life? If you're on an online platform right now, maybe just type out some goals. There's something so freeing about just typing out some goals that you have. Some of you for the first time today are going to write out some relational goals. I want to encourage you to take 90 seconds right now, discuss it on an online platform or in your home right now. What are your relational goals?
I think having the right goals is often so important for our life. I think about goals, I think about um, potty training my kids. I, I, have, I have four kids, and we've had to go through the painful process of potty training each one of those kids. Um, I have a boy, then two girls in the middle, and then a boy who's our youngest. And I can remember Brogan, who's my, my oldest child, he'll be 12 uh, this month. Uh, I can remember when we were first teaching him how to potty train. And being a boy, obviously there's a goal, right? The goal is to aim and to get into the tool, right? That's the goal. And as a parent, you know there are so many failed attempts over and over and over and over again. And after a while, you get tired of cleaning up the mess. And so what do you do? Raising boys, I think, is way easier, especially when it comes to potty training. Because at some point, here's what you do. And I don't know if you did this, but this is how we did training boys. At some point, we said, hey, just go outside and take care of your business, right? And so at that time, we were living in Graham. We were living in a, in a corner lot in Graham where we were visible to all of our neighbors. And I'm going to be honest with you, whether it's good parenting or not, I would just send Brogan outside. Why? Because why? It didn't take as much effort. Just go outside. The goal is just don't make a mess and send it out there because I don't feel like cleaning up any more messes. My son Keaton, he's our youngest, and since he was born, we moved out on some land, and we're kind of away from everybody. No one can see us. And even now, at the age of five, he'll be sitting on the couch. He'll get up. He'll bypass the bathroom. And he'll walk outside to take care of his business. Now, again, you can judge me all you want to, but that's just how we raise our kids, right? Because at some point, at some point you have to weigh in, is the effort even worth it? You say, Tad, what's the point? The point is this is exactly how many of us have attacked relationships. We've had a goal in mind, and since there's been times when we've missed the goal or it's gotten messy, we've had to come back and clean up the messes because maybe there was a stench of the past that was left behind. We thought, well, the easiest thing I can do is take the, the path of least resistance. So I'll put in the least amount of effort because I don't want to fail anymore. And I don't want to be discouraged anymore. And this is where so many of us have found ourselves. And so, so many of us, we've had these goals, but the goals don't seem achievable. So what do we do? We begin to lessen our goals. I heard Pastor Mike Todd say this, and Pastor Mike Todd just wrote a New York Times bestseller called Relational Goals. I would encourage you to pick it up. I got this in his book, and he said this, a goal without aim is senseless. A goal without aim is senseless, but having a goal without God is pointless. Having a goal without aim is senseless. If we don't have a goal, again, if we don't know what we're aiming for, we wouldn't even waste our time, but having a goal without God is pointless. See, many of us, we have goals in our relationships, and it's what we saw or what we think or we read about or it's an image we saw online, or a movie we watched, or a book that we read. What happens is those aren't the right goals. And so when those goals begin to fail us, what happens so often is that we begin to settle. You don't believe me? How many women right now who are watching this, who have just begun to settle in their relationships, and they'll date any man as long as he has a heartbeat, right? And when you said this, there's no good guys out there anyway. I've tried. I've went out. I've tested the waters, right? I've seen what's out there. There's nothing good out there. And so what you've done is since the goal hasn't gotten you where you think it should, and maybe even you haven't taken the steps to get there, you just pack it in. How many, how many dating couples right now who maybe are even cohabitating have been in a relationship for a really long time, and yet you're not even having a conversation of a goal towards a godly marriage because you said this? Why even try? Why even try? Look around. My parents got divorced. My friends have got divorced. They got divorced. Why even put in the effort? Why does it even matter? How many men that are watching this, how many men have convinced themselves that I'll never be this godly man? I'll never be a godly husband. I'll never be a godly father. I'll never be this or that. So what we've done is I'll just settle for whatever relationship I can get tonight or next weekend or whatever it might be because at the end of the day, this is all I'll ever be. How many married couples right now Literally, you got married because you fell in love with this white hot passion. You put some kids in the mix. You put some bills in the mix. You put life in the mix. And now you've gone on cruise control. And now you are just in a business relationship. And there is so much dysfunction in your home. And the thought of ever achieving something or running towards something seems like a distant thought in your mind. How many right now, even if you're in the grandparent season of life, have kind of packed it in in your relationship and you kind of believe your best days are behind you, and you're just kind of waiting until the by and by, until the glory days come. Is that really the goal that God has for you with the rest of your life? See, I think God has so much more for you and I than just accepting the status quo for what it is. 
So many of us right now, we have just assumed that this is all I'll ever have. Here's what I believe. If you are a follower of Jesus, if you have a relationship with God, then he has never called for you and I to just settle with the status quo. God has always called us to something greater. God has a far greater plan than any of you and I could ever imagine with our life. But what you and I have got to do is we got to begin to have the right goals. we got to get our goals aligned with God's goals. Then we got to begin to walk the goals that God has step by step following his directions. How many of us know the right directions matter? I don't know about you, but I have many times gone on a trip with my family or just me and Becky or by myself, and I've gotten lost on trips more time than I can count, right? And there are times that I had my GPS or I even had my phone with me, and I type in the coordinates, and what do I do? I put it into the GPS, and then I just put it on cruise control. And I'm just kind of on cruise control, and I don't know if this has ever happened for you before, but maybe there was a distraction in the car. Maybe I got tired for a few moments. Maybe I had the radio turned up too loud. And what happens? I miss one of the steps. I miss one of the coordinates. And it ends up taking me somewhere that I never intended to go, or ends up costing us more time, or the trip goes longer than we could have ever imagined. Now, what has saved us so many times is my wife, Becky. Now, she loves maps. So, like, when we travel together, she gets out one of those huge map books that you can buy at Walmart. And she loves, as we're traveling, regardless of what GPS says, she will literally journey along the map, and she will follow the whole, the whole step from where we're going from point A to point B. And I can't tell you how many times I've cruised right past the exit, and Becky said, I think we were supposed to take that exit right there. And it saved us so much time. But there have been times when both of us, especially if the kids are with us, have been distracted and we've missed the turn. Now, it would be so easy for me in that moment to be frustrated with technology, to be frustrated that the technology didn't get me from point A to point B. But you know what the problem was? It was me. I allowed myself to become distracted. I allowed myself to go on cruise control, right? I allowed myself to just assume that I would get from where I am to where I want to be. This is the same truth for our relationships. Many of us got into a relationship, we put it on cruise control in a marriage with our kids and relationships with our friends, and we just assumed that I'll get from point A to point B without following the steps that God has given us. What I believe that God wants to do is God wants to give us step-by-step instructions. And if you will follow God's instructions, God will lead you on a path to relationships that you didn't even think possible. What if you and I got serious about God's plan? What if you and I got serious instead of chasing after our goals to chase after God's goals? What if for the next seven weeks, you and I journey together? What if for the next seven weeks together, you and I got serious about these relationships that God's put in front of us? What if we got serious about pursuing what God wants for us? What if we got serious about chasing after what God wants in our marriages, in our homes, in our current relationships, in our future relationships? What if we got serious? What could God do? What might God do? That's why I want to encourage you to stay engaged, to trust God, to not just tune in even for a message each week, but begin to pick up God's word, to begin to talk about where God wants to take you, begin to make God the priority of your life. And that's really what I want to talk to you about in our remaining time together today. What I think we're going to discover today in our time together, and really as we hop into next week, is the importance that, that you and I have in this thing called relationships, because we were created by a God of relationships. See, many of us, we are struggling through relationships if we've been trying to do it on our own. But what we fail to understand is that God is a relational God. And God created us for a relationship with him and for a relationship with others. If I were to tell you today that God was the author and originator of relationships, don't you think that you and I would go to the source and the author for all of our relational needs? Now, how many of us know that God is the author of relationships, and yet we look to culture and the world and past experiences and to ourselves to try to fill that relational need and void or even to find the steps that we have for our life. So I want to do it together today just in our remaining time, but I want to give you two quick points today just to really set up where we're going for the rest of the series. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to build a foundation. And as we build the right foundation, we begin to have the right goals, and God begins to do something in our, our relationship that we never thought possible. So the first big idea today is this is the right relationships start with the right relationship. The right relationships start with the right relationship. You say, Todd, what do you mean by that? 
the right relationship with my spouse, my kids, my significant other, my friends. No, the right relationship is a relationship with God. I need you to understand today. Your relationships will never be all that God intends for them to be until you and I get shored up with the foundation of having the greatest relational need in our life filled by the one who created us, who sustains us, who put us on this earth, who has a plan for us. I need you to know that God's plan for your life is so much bigger than you could ever fathom or imagine. God's plan for your marriage, our future marriage, for your relationships, for your kids, for your future, is so much greater than you could ever think about. God loves you so much. He desired a relationship with you. And if you and I can get that relationship right, you and I can build on that foundation. He says that you and I are like master builders. And we are building upon a foundation in which he says, he, as in Jesus, is the cornerstone. If you don't have the right cornerstone, I'm just going to be honest with you, you are not going to be able to build the right foundation. Many of you are hearing me right now. And I wonder how many of us are going to tune out for this message today and go back to doing things our way and trying to maneuver through our relationships by ourselves. I want to challenge us to go back to the one who created us. Look what it says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. It says this. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. This is God speaking about you and me. He says, before you were ever thought of, you weren't an accident. You didn't just show up here by chance. God knew you. God formed you in the womb. God says, before you ever showed up here on this earth, you were created by God for a purpose, with a purpose, on purpose. You were not placed on this earth by chance. You were created by the God of the universe who wants to know you, who desires a relationship with you. And he says, listen, through me, because of me, all other relationships are made possible. See, what you think is missing right now is a relationship with him or her or them or they. It is a relationship with God that you need the most. Some of you are in a married relationship. You are parents right now. And I kind of be honest with you. The greatest relational struggle you are dealing with right now is that for one or both of you, God isn't number one. In fact, if we were to sit down right now and you were going through some marital struggles or even in relationship struggles, I could show you, not in any kind of arrogance or being better than anyone, I can show you how one or both of you do not have God as the number one priority in your life. Now, when I talk about parenting, I'm not talking about parents who have a rebellious teenager who's just literally walking away from them. But if you're a parent today, and you find yourself being disengaged. You find yourself not leading towards something. I can usually point back to a parent or both parents who aren't centered in a relationship with God having it first. I've said this so many times and I mean it. It is impossible to be in a godly marriage where both people, both people, both, both people in the, in the marriage, man and woman, have God as the number one priority and you to be contemplating divorce right now from your spouse. It's impossible. It is impossible for God to be number one in your life and for you to be involved in an extramarital affair. It is impossible for God to be number one and then you tune off from this message and you curse out your wife or your kids or your husband. It's impossible to verbally or physically, mentally, psychologically abuse somebody and God be number one. It's impossible for God to be number one and for you to be addicted to pornography. It's impossible in a dating relationship for you to say God's the priority while you're also involved in premarital sex. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's impossible. God has a foundation he wants to build upon. And God says, when you make me first, all healthy relationships flow out of a healthy relationship with me. I need you to understand just how valuable you are to God. He says this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. He says that we are God's handiwork. Another passage or another uh, translation, it says that we are God's masterpiece. You are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, to be in good relationships, to have a suitable helper in your marriage, in your home to do life with, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. God did not put you on this earth to struggle and strive and strain through relationships. God said, I'll put you on this earth to have a relationship with me. And if you put me first, I will put the right relationships in your life. And if you keep me first, it's an equation to have the right relationships in your life. The right relationships start with the foundation 
of the right relationship. Second thing is this, you can write this down. The right relationships start with the right plans. The right relationships start with the right coordinates, the right direction, the step-by-step instructions. The great philosopher Drake once said, he said, God's plan, God's plan. I can't do this on my own. It's God's plan. Now, how many of us could take the words of Drake and apply it to our life, right? Many of us, when it comes to marriage and parenting and relationships and friendships, I got this. It's my plan, my way. No, it's God's plan, right? We look around and we see what everyone else is doing and we're chasing after these moving bullseyes. Look what it says in Proverbs 14, 12. It says, there is a a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to what? To death. Many of us, we've been following after examples and models and culture and the world. And what's it leaving us to? To death and destruction and despair in our relationships. Many of us are gluttons for punishment. We keep coming back trying to do what we've seen done. And God says, listen, there's a better way. You keep doing what everyone else is doing, and you're going to keep getting what everyone else is getting. 56% of marriages are failing in our country today. Do I want to keep doing what everyone else is doing? Or do I believe that God who created marriage has a different plan, has a different strategy, a different outlook? The great thing about God is God hasn't left us to fend for ourselves. He hasn't left you and how to figure it out from past experiences or even from models that we've seen. Look what he says in Psalm chapter 32, verse 8. He says this. He says, I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. He says, I will guide you. I will lead you. You don't have to figure it out by yourself. Are we willing to trust God today? The author and creator of relationships. Are you and I willing to commit over the next few weeks to walk through what God might have for us to lead us to places that we've never been before? Listen, we can keep chasing culture. And culture is a moving target. It just keeps moving around. It's this Netflix and chill culture that said find love and sex and intimacy However you can define it, whatever works for you, but if I can be honest, whatever works for you ain't working, is it? And so it's time. It's time for you and I to test God, to trust God, to step out in faith and to trust him like never before. I believe we'll discover that in God's word, God is going to unlock the equation that you and I are looking for to all of our relational needs. Look what it says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. It goes on to say this. It says, the grass withers. The flowers fade. You could say technology withers, the movies go away, new books come out, new, new, new scrolling things happen on social media, right? But the word of God stands forever. The word of God endures forever. The timeless truth of God's word does not have to sit here and wonder what culture is going to do. The timeless truth of God's word rises above culture. God says, if you want to build a foundation on me, I will take your relationships the places that you never dreamed of. But you gotta trust me. You gotta trust me. So the last question I wanna leave you with today is this question right here. Do I wanna do things my way? Continue to experience the failure I've experienced in the past, the hardship, the heartache, the despair that I feel, the discouragement that I feel, or do I wanna begin to trust God's way? I can't force you to do that. I can't force you to journey with us and God can't force you either. God can't force you to wake up tomorrow and begin to walk with him and spend time with him and pursue him, begin to put your faith in him. But if you will, if you will, God will unlock relationships that you didn't even know were possible. See, God wants to give you the right foundation. He wants to give you the right direction that lead to the right goals, that ultimately lead to the right relationships if you allow him. But I think if some of us can be honest today, what's missing for so many of us is the foundation of a right relationship that's found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And for some of us, we say we have that right relationship. But if we could be honest, God really isn't our number one priority. Money is, finances are, sex is, whatever we got going on life, busyness, kids, whatever it is. And as a result, we have taken God's order and we flipped it upside down and then we cry out to God when all hell breaks loose. And God says, let's get that order back to where it needs to be. And you and I can begin to walk through relationships in ways you never thought possible. What I'll do today is I want to pray for you. No matter where you are today, I want to pray for you. No matter where you are in the world, 
Because maybe today what's missing in your life right now is just that healthy relationship that's built on the foundation that's found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I'm telling you right now, your relationships will never be all that God intends for them to be until you shore up that relationship first. For others of you today, I want to pray for you because you know this truth. And yet you let yourself go on cruise control. You let yourself just go through life, just kind of dictated by what the circumstances and the season of life. And as a result, your relationships are not where God desires for them to be. I want to pray for you as well. So right now, wherever you are in the world right now, I want to ask you just to pray with me right now. Maybe if you're here right now and what you're desiring is a relationship with Jesus, just right now in your own way, just cry out to him right now and say, God, today, I want to put my faith and trust in you and you alone. I realize that's what's missing the most in my life right now is a relationship with you. God, I believe today that you love me so much that not having a relationship with me was not an option for you. And you were so serious about it that you allowed your son Jesus to leave heaven and come to earth on a rescue mission for me. Why did he have to rescue me? Because there was something in my life called sin. And sin had separated me from you. And Jesus came. Jesus came to save and rescue me from my sin. He went to a cross. And on a cross, he bore my sin, the penalty of my sin, the weight of my sin, the death that I deserve for all the sin that I've committed in this life. He died that death for me. God, through your grace, you poured out his blood on the cross for me. I believe that Jesus went into a tomb where he spent three days. But God, through your power and your might, God, you resurrected him from the grave. And because of your power, he is alive today. And through Jesus, because of Jesus, I can have a living relationship with you today. Today, I place my faith and my trust in you and you alone. Right now, no matter where you are right now, here's what I want you to do. If you're praying to receive Jesus for the very first time, there's going to be a box that's going to pop up right there in your chat. It's going to say, I'm receiving Jesus today. Right now, I want you to click on that. I know that can be intimidating for you, but right now, I want you to know we have people who would love to get to know you. We want to begin to back for your life with the right relationships. We have a host team that will come alongside of you, help you in your next step. Maybe you just want to pray with somebody. This would be a great time to just jump on right now and just click that button that says live prayer. We have a team that would love to pray with you no matter where you're at right now. We want you to know the single greatest relationship you would ever have is a relationship with Jesus. All right now, I want to pray for those of you who would say you have a relationship with Jesus, but you know you've gone on cruise control. You haven't made God the number one priority, and as a result, your relationships are suffering right now. I want to pray for you right now. Say, God, in this moment, maybe for you right now, wherever you are, just cry out to him and say, God, right now, I want to shift my focus back to you. I want to put you back in the right seat, making you the first priority in my life. God, I surrender to the fact today that I've been trying to do this by myself. I've put other things in front of you. I've made other goals the bullseye. But today, what I want to have is the relationship that I need to have with you. And I realize that I've drifted. I've looked at culture. I've chased after things that don't matter. I've allowed sin to creep into my life, whatever it might be. And today, I want to begin to get my life back on track. It begins today, but it really begins tomorrow. But what I begin to do tomorrow when I wake up, will I pursue you first? Will I run to your word? Will I run to you in prayer? Will I trust you before I step into my marriage or with my kids or into work or relationships or whatever my life looks like? God, I want to put my faith and my trust in this season in you like never before. God, we ask that you would work and that you would move on our behalf in this thing called marriages so that we wouldn't have to struggle. Marriages are hard enough. Relationships and parenting are hard enough to do without you. God, we need you now more than ever. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Right now, what I want to do is I want to continue our time together in a moment of worship. And our band is going to lead us in a song right now called Nothing is Wasted. And right now, if you are giving your life to Jesus for the first time or if you already know who Jesus is, this is a moment to reflect on the fact that there has nothing been wasted with him. And everything that he has done is for us because he loves us. So right now, wherever you are right now, I want to encourage you just to worship him wherever you are today.
are loving. I love how practical this message was for me. I love knowing that there's not a relationship in my life that's too far gone. Every relationship in my life, it needs a goal. Every single one. My, my spouse, my wife, my, my kids, my family, my friends, each one of the relationships in my life, they, they need to honor God. They need to glorify God, and there's no way that they're going to do that without me being intentional in my life and setting a goal for each one of the relationships in my life, 
me to do that. And I love, it. I love what Pastor Tad said in his message, that every right relationship in our life, it needs to start with the right relationship. And that's a relationship with God. We realize here today that some of you may have stepped into a relationship with Jesus for the very first time today, and we could not be more excited for you. Listen, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, there's not a relationship in your life that won't be impacted by you choosing to step into a relationship with Jesus. And we want to be a church. We want to be a church that does whatever it takes, whatever it takes to help you to follow, grow, and live for him in every facet of your life. We're so excited that you've chosen to follow Jesus today. We, we, we want you to let us know so that we can contact you, so that we can celebrate you, and again, help you in your faith journey any way that we can and serve you any way that we can. I want to remind you also that we are in, a, an, in an initiative here in our church that we've started a few weeks ago called Small Act greater impact, and we are so excited about what God has been doing through this initiative. So if you want to learn more about this initiative, this is what you can do. Jump onto social media and, and search the hashtag small act, greater impact, and through that, you'll be able to see posts that Hope Church families have made online, uh, a, a different post of small acts of kindness, because us as a church, we are continuing to lean into what God has called for us to do, and that is to spread hope in any way that we can. So we would love for you to engage in that initiative. And if you post online and use the hashtag, we're going to send you a shirt that says Small Act Greater Impact on it uh, just for engaging in that and celebrating what God is doing uh, together collectively as our church. Listen, it has been an amazing service here today. We are so thrilled and honored that you've chosen to, st uh, to spend just a bit of your day here with us. We cannot wait to see you back next week for Summer at Hope Week 2. We'll see you then.